Last time we were able to, uh, we went over the database structure, and now we know what we need to insert when we register new users. Oh, we can actually delete this, this the demonstration stuff that I did here. And uh, so now we know what we need to insert for when we register new users. So we're going to start actually writing methods for that. And we're going to start in register activity because in the Firebase methods uh, register new email method, when this is executed inside of register activity uh, right up here, the authentication state will change to signed in if it's successful and it will be signed out if it's unsuccessful. So we can go down here into our auth state listener and we can write code to uh, handle when the auth state is changed. But to do that, we're going to need to actually get Firebase database into our project. And to do that, we go up to tools, go to Firebase, and go to real time database right here. And I'm guessing that the dependencies aren't going to work because we were having those problems before. It might, but so let's go into the build.gradle app folder and I'll add it by clicking here and let's just see if it works. Oh, 10.0.1. They actually changed that, I think. But anyway, let's try that. And nope, as you can see, it's screwing up our Gradle. So I'm going to press Control Z to go back. And uh, I'm just going to put in the dependencies manually. So I'll hit try again. And I'm going to click on this, but I'm not going to click accept. So I'm just going to type this out. It's going to be the same as here, but it'll be uh, Firebase-database. Uh, and I'll, I'll use 10.2.6. So I'm just going to copy this line right here. And I'm going to go down one and I'm going to say Firebase database, change this to database, and that's it. Now we're going to try and sync that. So now all dependencies are set up correctly, as you can see over here in the tool. And now we're ready to use the Firebase database. And you can follow the instructions here, or you can just follow along with me when I'm writing code. So I'm going to close the assistant here, close the build.gradle app folder, and now we're in register activity and we're going to go to the top and actually create our Firebase database. So private Firebase database, and what should I call it? Call it Firebase database. And then we need our database reference. So database reference, I'll call it my ref. That's just the convention. You can call it whatever you want, but that's the convention and that's what I use. And then we're gonna go down into our uh, setup Firebase auth method here. And right below the auth, we'll go Firebase database equals Firebase database dot get, get instance. So exactly the same as the authentication, but you get a database instance instead of an authentication instance. And then my ref equals Firebase database dot get reference. And then we have a reference to the database. So now we can go down into this if statement here. So if the user does not equal null, because remember this, this uh, method is going to execute, it's going to run when the authentication state is changed. In other words, it's going to run if the authentication state is changed after we register a new email. So we can go into here and write the code for the next steps. And what we'll do is we'll go myref dot add listener for single value event. This is just going to execute for for one one sort of event because we're not looking to look at the database all the time. We just want to take a, a single snapshot of what it looks like in its current state. So then we go new value event listener and this is going to be the on data change method where th this will show when the, the data is changed in the database and this will show if uh, there's an error. So we have like an error method and a success method basically. And so inside of the success method, we, the, we want to do a few checks. The first check is going to be, so first check, make sure the username is not already in use. And if it is in use, then we're going to append a random string to it. Uh, and then the user can change it to whatever they want later. So in other words, just to give you kind of an, an example, if, if they say they told, told us that their name was Mitch Tabian, and Mitch Tabian was already in the database, what this is going to do is it's going to change the username to Mitch Tabian, but then it's going to append a random string to the end of it. So I'll probably do like Mitch Tabian underscore, and then it'll append like some big long random string to it. Probably not that big. We'll probably do like something like that. And uh, that, that way they can still enter, because on the register form, the only option they have is to enter their name. So if, they're, if the username is already uh, in use, then we'll just append some random string, and then they can change it to whatever they want later. So that's what we're aiming to do there. And then we're going to have a couple methods. Um, so one will be add new user to the database, and then add new user account settings to the database.
Actually, I could do underscore so it matches what the database says. Because if you remember, if we go back to our database, we have two kind of main nodes for the users. We have user account settings, and then we have the users. And uh, so these and these nodes need to be inserted for every time we create a new user. And that's what I am talking about right here. So first is check the username. Next is add the user to the database, and then add user account settings to the database. So let's get started on this check uh, if the username is in use method. We're going to create another Firebase method. So we're going to go into our Firebase methods class. And I'll just go, uh, I guess we can go to the top. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. We go public boolean check if username exists, string username. And we need the data snapshot or else we won't know what's inside the database. So data snapshot, data snapshot. And let's just log it, checking if username already exists. Okay, and then we need to create a new user, so equals new, oops, not user info. Don't I have a user object class? Oh, I haven't even made the data, mo data models yet. Okay, so that's actually what we need to do first. So and I don't even have a models um, uh, package here. So let's create a new package. So just right click on the Java files folder and go to new package. I'm going to call it models. And the first class inside models is going to be user, which is the one I just started trying to create. And so now this user class is basically going to match what we see in Firebase right here. So it's going to have an email parameter, a phone number parameter, user ID, and username. That's what we're going to put inside of user here. And they're all going to be strings. So private string uh, user ID, private string phone number. And make sure that these match exactly what shows in Firebase. So the, the text has to be identical. If it's not, it's going to screw up your Firebase and your getter and setter methods won't work. So just so you know, be aware of that. Oops. So phone number, private string email, private string username. Okay. Then we can just insert the default constructor. So alt insert constructor, highlight everything. And let's uh, actually do an empty constructor too. I can't remember if I use it or not. So just copy the same thing and delete delete everything. And then getter and setters, all of them. And these the, the, the text in these even matters. Like if I change this to a capital, it won't work. So just keep that in mind. Firebase is very uh, particular with the the case uh, and everything. So just don't don't touch those. Just let Android Studio generate everything for you. And we're also going to get a two string method. And that should be good. So let's go back to Firebase methods. And inside here now I can create that user that I just tried to do. So user equals new, not user info, I want user. And insert that model. And uh, now we're going to loop through the data snapshot and check to see if that user name already exists. Um, I'll write out the loop and then I'm going to explain it. So for data, oops, data snapshot ds, and then we use data snapshot get children. Okay, so what this does, if we look at the database here, so the data snapshot contains every node inside the database, and when I loop through it, it's going to loop through the nodes. So like the first iteration of the loop is going to capture only this stuff, the user account settings, and it will, and then I can get the objects inside there. The second iteration of the loop is going to contain users, the users node. So that's that's how you have to. If I added, I could add another node, like let's call it another node, node, Mitch. Uh, so the first iteration of the loop would be another node, the, or sorry, the zeroth iteration of the loop would be another node. The first iteration would be this one. The third iteration would be that one. So that's how you iterate through the data snapshot in Firebase. So let's go. Oops, go back to the project, and let's just uh, let's just log the data snapshot just so we actually know what it looks like. So I'll just do, I guess, data snapshot, and just print ds. And you can play around with this. Like, if you're debugging it and you're having troubles, this is this is essentially what you want to do. You want to have a log and just keep iterating through the data snapshots and just keep trying like different children and different values and try to figure out what's going on so that you can get what you need. 
if, if you're having troubles, that's what I would suggest doing. Uh, so then the first thing is we want to do user dot set username, and this is this is how you retrieve information from Firebase. So I declared a user object, and then I want to set the username from the data snapshot. So I go data snapshot dot child. Uh, actually, there's no I don't need to get a child because the data snapshot here. I would only need to get a child if this was more um, like there were more fields, like because this 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 data snapshot is going to return this node. I don't need to use child because this is the child already. Like if there was if the hierarchy was like deeper, more embedded, then I would need to use child, but I don't in this case. So I, I can just go straight up get value and it'll be user dot class and then get username. And now so now this user object will contain that username. Now we're going to need to write uh, a special method because if you look in the Firebase database here, the way we store usernames is with a period. So in order to check if the, um, if the username is already in use, we're going to basically be comparing it with the actual name. Because if we go to the, <laughs> that sounded confusing. If we go to the login screen, the person has to type in their name. So I would type Mitchell Tabian, for example. But in the Firebase database, it's stored as a period. So we can't compare those two strings because they're different. We need to take this, get rid of the period, insert a space, and then compare it to the full name. So that's what that's the method that we need to write right now. I'm going to create actually a new utility class, and I'm going to call it string manipulation. And inside this class, I'm just going to put all the methods that we're going to be using in the app to manipulate strings. Because chances are, if you're going to manipulate a string in one activity or one fragment, you're probably going to be doing it in others. So it's better just to uh, create these methods. And they can be static too, so they're easy to use. So public static um, expand username, and it's just going to take the string username, and all we need to do is return username.replace. We want to replace a blank space, so we just do space, and we want to replace it, oh no, the other way around. We want to take the period and replace it with a blank space. That's all. And while we're here, we can write the other method for condensing. So public static string condense username string username. And we can just do return username dot replace. And it's just going to be the exact opposite. So it'll take a space and we'll return a period in the middle. And that's what we're going to use. So we can close string manipulation, close user class also. And now we can write our if statement to compare the strings. So we can go string manipulation dot uh, expand username, type the username, and we do, or we're not, we do username dot user dot get username, and we want to compare it to the username. So we just go equals username. And that's going to be the username that we pass right here. So we're checking if the username exists by passing a username, and we're comparing it with all the ones that exist in the database. If one exists in the database, then we found a match. So we can do found a match. And if we found a match, we can return true. If it manages to get all the way out, then we can return false. And that will be it. So that's our method to check if that username exists already. Now let's go back to um, register activity here. So we can do if Firebase methods dot check if username exists, pass the username and we want to pass the data snapshot. So if that's true, then we know it already exists. And so if it already exists, we want to append a random string. So I'm going to create a global variable. Let's just go to the top here. And where am I? I'll put it down here. It's private string append. And I'll set it equal to nothing. And let's go down here. So if it exists, I'm going to take append and oops, append equals my ref dot push, which is a Firebase method. Push will generate a random, a randomly, a, it's a key. It's a randomly generated key, basically. And then I can go get key. Uh, and because they're really long, I can just do substring. And we're just going to take the from three to seven. Because otherwise, you're going to get something that looks like um, like this. You'll get a huge key. And we don't really need a big one like that, so we're just going to take seven characters of it, and that should be it'll be unique. It should be unique anyway. So we can say username already exists, 
appending random string to name. Oops, and we can just say oh pen. That will be the random string. Okay. Then our disco username equals username plus append, and now we'll have our new username. And this is a good place to stop. In the next one, we will actually get started with adding the user data to the database and adding the user account settings to the database. So I'll see you guys in the next video.